Praise the Lord and uh, welcome to Wednesday night Bible study. Thank God for yet another opportunity to share his word with you. You know, when we think about Bible study, it's a time where we are able to read God's word, to share God's word, to really dig into God's word. You know, a lot of times, and I, I say this, um, you sit under a person you uh, on a Sunday morning, and yet you don't uh, attend or even listen to uh, that person's Bible study. You really don't know what a person believes until you have opportunity to follow them or or be in their particular Bible studies, because then that's an opportunity to possibly ask questions, or it's an opportunity to actually see a, a true, true uh, interpretation of God's word. And so I believe that uh, the Bible studies are very, very important. And I pray that as I share tonight with you, that you will allow the spirit of God to minister to you and such a way that you'll say, oh my, I, I, I didn't see it that way. I didn't understand it that way, but I, I thank God for clarity. I, I thank God for his wisdom. I thank God for now a, a better uh, understanding of his word. In other words, it's been revealed to me. I have some revelation, knowledge, and understanding of God's word. And tonight I'll actually be reading from Ephesians chapter 5, uh, verses 1 through seven theme and or title would be uh, walk in love. And so when you think about to walk in love, how do we walk in love? We walk in love, uh, first of all, based on our relationship with Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for this awesome, awesome opportunity, this awesome, awesome privilege that you have granted to us to Father, have a Bible study, and Lord, for me to share the Bible study, Lord, and I pray for those who will tune in to the Bible study, Lord God, that your word would speak in such a way that the people will know that it's not from a mere man, Lord, but from your spirit. And so in advance, we want to say thank you, have your way, and we won't fail to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise that only you deserve. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Ephesians chapter 5, beginning at verse number 1. And it reads, it says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of God, excuse me, in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. And as we look at this right from the beginning, the scripture uh, begins in five at once. It says, be imitators of God as dear children. In other words, you know how uh, a child in your home will have a tendency to watch what mom, if it's a little girl, watch what mom do, if a little boy, watch what dad do, and they begin to imitate them. They begin to act like they act. They begin to even try to talk like they talk. They begin to even sit like the parent may sit. And so the scripture here says, be imitators of God as dear children. And so if God is our father and we indeed are uh, the children of God, and it says to imitate our father. So what are the characteristics of our father? One in particular is love and, and, and patience. So we show patience. We demonstrate 
love because what we're doing is we're imitating our father. And I wrote something here that says, believers should follow the example of God's actions. He loved us, and that's you and me, and he loved us even when we were enemies of the cross. You say, what do you mean by that? In other words, when we look at Romans 5 and 8, and I want to read it, it says, but God demonstrated his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So what I'm saying to you tonight is that God uh, loved us enough that Christ died on our behalf. And he says, yet while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In other words, because of the love that God had for the world, the scripture in John 3 and 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave, and he gave us his son, Jesus, and Jesus died on the cross on our behalf for, for, for our sins. And for that reason, the scripture says that we are to imitate him. In other words, the same way he showed love for you and I as sinners, uh, that's how we need to treat others. We need to treat people with love. We need to treat others with respect. We need to imitate God. We need to understand that we are to demonstrate um, a sacrificial love. We are to demonstrate uh, forgiveness. And so when we look at imitating Almighty God, we're talking about our lives reflecting, our lives showing, our lives uh, allowing people to see that uh, we indeed are the children of Almighty God. And being the children of Almighty God, we being children, he being the father, and we imitating the father, that means that we're going to be like our father. That means that we want to take on uh, his characteristics. We want to say what he say. We want to do what he do. And when we do it that way, that is where we are uh, imitators of Almighty God. And again, he say, as dear children, as a child of the Father. Praise God. I go on to look at, um, praise God, verse number two. It says, so walk in love. And as we walk in love, that's how we're able to, <clears throat> excuse me, demonstrate who God is. Now, in uh, 1 John 4 and 16, the word of God reads, it says, God is love, and um, he who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. And so if God is indeed love, right, and we abide in God, then God abides in us. So that means that it's got to be love that's demonstrated. It's got to be love that's being showed. And so if I operate in a manner and as we read imitating God and now we're talking about uh, being in a manner to where what we do will be an offering it will be a, a, a sacrifice because when Jesus died on the cross the scripture says that it was a sweet smelling aroma it was a sacrifice Worthy. It was a sacrifice that was acceptable to Almighty God. I think about our very own lives. In the book of Romans, Romans says that we are to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is our reasonable service. So, in other words, when we look at this verse number two and walk in love, as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. In other words, our lives should uh, be a sacrifice and the sacrifice should be a sweet smelling aroma that uh, uh, God is willing to accept. In, it, in other words, you not have old stinky attitude uh, uh, you know, that old stinky disposition that you always are displaying. So we're talking about a sweet smelling aroma. We're talking about almighty God being pleased with who we are because of the way that we're walking and 
operating in love. It's, it's, it's so awesome when you look at God's word. It's so awesome how God's word will speak to us. It's so awesome how when God's word is speaking to us, it will allow us to grow. In 1 John 4 and 8, the word of God reads, it says, he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. And so if I say that I know God, I should know love. If I don't know love, it's clear because of what the word has said. It clearly means that I don't know God. Now, you will have some, you will have one, you may have many that will say, uh, preacher, you don't know what you're talking about. I, I know that I'm loving everybody. I, it's just some people that I, I just can't love. There's some people that I don't want to love. There's some people that, and, and here's the whole key. The scripture says that God is love. It says, he who does not love does not know God. And I think even as you look at the scripture in 1 John, it even talks about how the scripture says that if you don't love your brother, so in other words, if you don't love your fellow man, if you don't love them, how can you say you love God? You have your fellow man, uh, your brothers and sisters who are uh, in the image of Almighty God and, and in your presence and you see them, yet you can't love them who you see, but you say you love someone that you can't see. And, and the scripture says that, that, that that's not right. The scripture says that, 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 that actually you're lying to yourself. You're actually lying to others. And so again, 1 John 4, 8, he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. I wrote something here. It says, as Christian men, women, boys and girls, we should reflect the nature of God's love by serving others rather than ourselves. In other words, a reflection of who God is, we will allow people to see that, you know, it's not always about <clears throat> me. It's not always about I. It's, it's about people. It's about being helpful. It's about serving them. It's about sometimes putting someone else first. It's sometimes about allowing someone else to 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 get some praise, to to get some recognition. Maybe I'm in the choir and I always sing the, the solos and 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 this time I'm I want to step back and I want to make sure that my brother or my sister can now have their opportunity to, to solo, you know, just so many different ways that where the scripture says that we can uh, reflect God's love and, and it's by serving others rather than ourselves. When we think about Jesus's death on the cross, that's a clear illustration of love. You know, and again, I said his, his, his death on the cross was indeed a, 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 a sweet smelling aroma to God because of his obedience and because of what his death accomplished. And so we've got to understand that our walk needs to be one that will be a sweet uh, aroma in the nostrils of almighty God. You don't want uh, your walk uh, uh, to be a stench in, 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 in God's uh, nostrils. You So if there's some issues, if there's some things that's going on that's preventing you from from living a life of love, a, a life of forgiveness, a life of, you know, just, just walking and being obedient to the Spirit of God, then you need to check that. You need to go to God in prayer. You need to maybe have someone come alongside of you to help to uh, to, to, to lead you, to, to guide you. And uh, it, it's just so, so awesome when we look at God's Word. In 5 and 3, it says, but fornication and all uncleanness, covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Now, 
when I looked at this and I said, when we look at this list, right, you have to understand that the time period when Paul wrote this in uh, the city of Ephesus, it was the temple of Diana. The temple of Diana was where all types of pagan worship took place. It was a place where all kinds of fornication and, and greed and just everything took place in that temple. And it was a, a major seaport that when people came in and they went to the temple and that's where they had the orgies and, and the drunken parties and all, yes, in the temple. And when you look at what Paul was saying here, he was talking to them and he was saying on that list of for fornication, uncleanness, and covetousness, he says, those things uh, a saint of God should not be doing. In other words, you should not be in the temple of Diana participating with the pagans in all kinds of uh, lewd behavior, all kinds of crazy, crazy nonsense. But what I like, it says, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for the saints. And so when you think about this, Paul was saying nobody should even be able to associate your name with these things. There's things that we're doing today. There's places that we're going today. There's the way people are looking at us today. And it's because of who we are, it's because of what we're doing, is because of what we're saying they should not even be able to associate your name with uh, uh, some of these different things. It is a shame that we have uh, stooped so low in our in our Christian walk that, that we can have somebody associate us with this or with that. As we go on, it says, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting but rather giving of thanks. And so here we're talking about sexual immorality, uh, any kind of impur impurity or greed. Paul was saying that it should not be a hint of these things because they are improper for God's people. And when you start talking about a hint, that's just a, a little bit. Uh, you know, the scripture says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. So if you put just a little bit in the bread mix, the whole pile has been now exposed. And so that's what happens when we sometimes you just let a, a and we call, oh, it's just a, a little sin and a little this, a little that, a little leaven leavens the entire lump. And so we must be careful as Paul was saying, not even a hint of those things should be in uh, the lives of God's people. Uh, and God, uh, I'm sorry, and Paul was also saying in this particular time, you have the temple of Diana there, but don't allow the culture of the day to, to, to pull you away from the things of God. Don't allow the culture of that particular time period to have you caught up in something that's uh, not who you are, uh, not a part of whose you are, because it's not uh, where a Christian man, woman, boy, or girl should be at and should be things that they are participating in. You know, I, I shared a little bit Sunday when I was sharing God's word, you know, what are we blaming on uh, the pandemic? Pandemic is so many different things that we're blaming on the pandemic is so many things that's going on in our lives. And we're saying that it's because of the pandemic that's going on. However, what I want you to understand is if we are who we say that we are, if our prayer life is where our prayer life needs to be, if our relationship with Almighty God is where it needs to be, if we're reading, if we're studying the word of God, if we're uh, surrounding ourselves with uh, people who know and love the Lord, we wouldn't get caught up in some of these things. We would not have to say, uh, the, the pandemic has uh, forced me or has got me doing some things that I wouldn't normally do. What we've got to begin to do is we've got to begin to get back into a right relationship with Almighty God. We've got to get back to 
a right relationship to where our heart is committed to the word of God, to, to, to what God's word speaks. But uh, like I say, so many times, <clears throat> excuse me, we allow so many, many other things to come in and influence who we are. And I guess I would ask you a question today. How is it that we're allowing the culture to influence us? What does the culture have to offer that's so, so, so very important in your life that it can pull you away from the things of God? What has the culture had to offer that is so important that you now don't follow God the way that you used to follow? What is it in the culture that can make you say, well, eh, this is not going to hurt me. But when you were following God faithfully, you wouldn't even attempt those things. You wouldn't even have spoken those things. You would not have even went to some of those places. However, now because <clears throat> of a uh, uh, the pandemic, now you're using that as an excuse. We've got to stop making excuses. And I'm not saying that it hasn't been tough. I'm, I'm not making light of that. I'm not saying it has not been some problems and or situations that have not come about since the pandemic. However, we are using the pandemic to, to, to just do any manner of things. The, and, and, and it's not the way it's supposed to be. And Paul said it, those things that shouldn't be ahead of those things. And <clears throat> Some of those things shouldn't even be spoken about as it relates to a Christian man, woman, boy, or girl. Um, so when we go on, and I'm, I'm, I'm here in, in five and four, and um, I, I'm going to read what I wrote. It says it shouldn't be obscenity, all the cussing, foolish talk, coarse jesting, joking. In other words, you know, sometimes we can laugh somebody right in the hell. And I say that because some things that uh, they are joking about and we're laughing about is really not a laughing matter. It's really uh, a matter, and, and I would say it like this, it really is a matter of the heart because where they are and they can joke about it, like, man, <clears throat> When I get to heaven, I'm going to see my boys. Or when I go to hell, I'm just be with my boys. and We're going to hang out. That's eternal damnation. That's a spirit that will be tortured forever throughout all eternity. So that's not going to be you and the boys partying. You and the boys having a good time. That's going to be hell. You have been damned. You uh, have, have been sentenced to... Uh, 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 the rest of your spiritual life to be in, uh, be tormented. Uh, and, and that's so those things, again, th those things are not good. You know, and you think about how sometimes we play and, and we joke about some things and some things really not a joking matter. Some things are so serious. Some things could be life and death for a person, heaven and hell for another. And so we've got to be careful. Uh, and when you look at this, and that's why he said, walk in love. In other words, and I remember my, uh, my pastor, he used to say, you love the hell right out of them. In other words, they're, they're because of their uh, uh, lack of relationship with Jesus Christ or no relationship, I should say, with Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, right now they are condemned to hell. Right now they're heading straight to hell. Right now that's that's where they will spend all eternity. But he used to say, you come alongside them, you encourage them, and you love the hell right out of them. And so what happens now, they enter into a personal intimate relationship with Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Praise God. To God be the glory. And so we go on and uh, we look at um, five and five. Before I go to five and five, I just want to say this, though. We can't live according to the world standard. We can't. And uh, the reason why we can't uh, uh, live by the world standards, and, and I'll answer it right now, but I had to say, uh, ask that question. We uh, tell you that first. We can't live according to the world standards. And you might say why. And why we go to verse uh, five and five. And it reads, it says, for this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man 
nor who is an idolater has any inheritance whew, in the kingdom of Christ and God. When you look at this inheritance, meaning something that you're entitled to, with this type of lifestyle, you don't have an inheritance into the kingdom of God. Your inheritance would be to hell. And so when I think about this, as a Christian man, woman, boy, or girl, we cannot adopt the lifestyles of those who don't know, those who don't want to know. What has happened is we have allowed so much influence from those who don't know and those who don't want to know. And so that's why I say that we can't live according to the world's standard because as long as we're living according to the world's standards we will not have the inheritance into the kingdom of almighty god and so we've got to be so very very careful that we don't allow the world's standards or standard to become a standard of ours we've got to be so very very careful that as we're walking in god's love we're doing it in a manner where we can help to encourage those that don't have a relationship with almighty god and so when you continue to look at this you will miss out on your rewards because as you have an inheritance in the kingdom even the inheritance that we have in the kingdom is based on rewards i think about the scripture in the book of revelation it says he's come quickly to 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 give a reward and he said it's based on what's done here in the body here on this earth and so we will be rewarded for what we do here on the earth and that's a part of our inheritance and so we've got to recognize that because of the way that we live it could interfere with our inheritance we could be disinherited and we don't want to be disinherited. So we want to walk according to the word of God. We want to walk in a manner that that's again, as I read very early on here in uh, verse number two, I believe it was where we can become a sweet smelling aroma in God's nostrils. And so I go on and I look at uh, uh, five and six is let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. In other words, uh, don't let somebody deceive you. Don't be duped. Don't be conned. Don't be fooled. You know, because people can come with many words. People can come with, uh, uh, and I mean, just articulate themselves in such a manner that they woo you, they trick you, they deceive you. You know, you, they tell you, you know, send me $10 and I'll, I'll give you a free prayer cloth, you know, and just listen to that. You're giving them $10, but yet they're going to send you a free prayer cloth. But it's all in a delivery. It's all about how they look. It's all about the words that they use. And sometimes what we can do is, even in this uh, Christian walk of faith, we sometimes get into the wrong community of people. And those people begin to express certain, certain thoughts and certain actions. And after a while, we begin to hear, we begin to listen. And I think a lot of times it happens when we're on our jobs, mostly because that's when a lot of times you're around a, a, a lot of folk that may not have a, a intimate relationship with uh, uh, Jesus Christ and, and, and maybe some are babes in Christ. But the way that they talk, and if, if you're not careful, you'll begin to listen, you'll begin to laugh, you'll begin to joke, you'll begin to get caught up in those very same things that they are. But we have to be careful that we don't be deceived by the words of people. We don't be deceived because somebody's coming with a, a slick tongue, that somebody's coming with a slick look, somebody's coming with the fancy, fancy words. So be careful and don't be deceived is what uh, Paul is saying here. So as we go on to read uh, the very last verse, which is indeed verse number seven, it says, therefore do not be partakers with them. 
In other words, just like what I've said, we are called as Christian men, women, boys, and girls to be set apart, to be set apart for God's service. And so if we're set apart, that means we're not going to get caught up in those things. If we're set apart, that means that although we fell, although we've fallen, although we've been doing some things that are not uh, particularly uh, right in God's eyesight, or, or, or maybe they may not be uh, what we might deem a sin, but they're still not things that I used to do. There's still not things that I was comfortable in doing, but I'm doing those things now and I'm not sure why I'm doing it. And yes, I blamed it on the pandemic, but now I know better. And now I need to get things right because I know better, which means I need to do better. I think about the scripture says that he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And so this would be that particular opportunity where you go before almighty God and, and you repent. And just keep in mind, repent means to turn away from. And so if you're repenting, that means that you're going to walk away from, you're going to move away from, you're going to stop doing that. You're going to turn around and no longer be a part of that. So that's what repenting is all about. And if that's what you'd like to do, I say we pray a prayer of faith right now. Fathers, in the precious name of Jesus that we come before you, Father, forgive me, Lord, for my shortcomings. Forgive me for those things right now that can't, don't, and won't honor and glorify you. Father, I ask this day, Lord God, that you allow me to repent and turn from those things and turn back to you. And Father, I thank you for accepting me. I thank you for recognizing me. I thank you for acknowledging me as I come with a heart of repentance. Lord, I thank you. I praise you. I bless you for us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. To God be the glory for you. And maybe you're saying today, you know, I really just need to get to know Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. And I want Jesus to live in me and through me. And so you do this by saying, Father, in the precious name of Jesus that I come before you today. Father, your word says that if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died and was raised from the dead and now sits at your right hand, that I would be saved. Father, I am confessing and believing this this day. Jesus, come into my heart. Live in me and through me for the glory of God. Jesus, thank you for coming into my heart. Holy Spirit, I now recognize your presence and it is my desire to be led by your presence. It is my desire to submit to your presence. It is my desire to commit to your presence. Father, thank you for receiving me into your family. I thank you for it this day. It is in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. And I say to you, welcome to the family of God. Thank God for your presence. Thank God that you are now a child of God. God. You can call him daddy. I say begin this walk of faith by getting a Bible. Begin reading at St. John chapter 1 beginning at verse number 1. And I say to all this day until we have opportunity to meet, I ask the Lord's blessings on you and your family. May he keep you in perfect peace. In Jesus name. Amen.